something that Mark has just said. And, and I certainly agree with him um, about the really big issues that the people can respond now because of uh, the availability of Twitter and all, all of those things. But there are, I think, a lot of important issues that are slid past the public using formulaic, degraded language so that they don't really understand what's being foisted on them. And I don't think that we're all quite as intelligent as, as Matthew thinks we are and as quick on the uptake as Matthew thinks we are. Can I give you an example which I'd like any of you to come back on? And that is the way in which the National Health Service reforms were advanced upon the country by this government. In language which I can understand, which we were told was all for our own good, the right thing to do, and it sounded okay, giving GPs the power and all that for the benefit of the patients, and it'll save money, but it's all for the good of the patients, and then, thank goodness, Shirley Williams read the small print. And if she hadn't read the small print, I don't think that what has, the objections that have now been voiced about that policy would ever have come a light, ever have come to light. What do the rest of you think about the way in which white papers, green papers, consultation documents are slid Pastors. I think they are. Do you? Uh, can I start back with you, Mark? Is that where I move it's, diff on? it's difficult because I can't imagine that many people read them. I mean, they may be accessible on the internet. Um, you could say it's it's one of the problems of our age is that people's attention spans and that ability to to comprehend difficult information seems to have decreased. Um, so although we have much more information that we are able to access and white papers and green papers and so on. Um, how many people, um, how many um, people who aren't experts in the field actually bother to do that? And I suspect that it's, it's very few. So although within the political class and the civil service class, um, what Jack is talking about um, matters hugely because of, you need good quality um, legislation. Um, from the point of view of the, of the electorate and the people and the communication of messages to the people, um, I suspect that um, most of that goes, um, most of that goes past them. Can I interject there? I, I think that this is, this is precisely the responsibility of the press. It is our job to go and read those white papers and green papers and disseminate that information in a vernacular. And I think this brings us back to Mr. Merrill. Uh, because if you read certain papers, you know perfectly well if you pick up the Guardian, you pick up the Telegraph, you're not going to get the same interpretation of the green or white paper. And the difficulty with Mr. Murdoch and what he was hoping to do was that he was going to control an enormous amount of the coverage that we were receiving. And once that happens, if your filter is one filter, you can no longer be sure of the accuracy of what you're hearing. It'll be technically accurate but a very different animal that loaded propositions, would you not? Yes, so, so here's, here's another side to the same story. Uh, I, I, I don't think Shirley Williams read the, the small print. I mean, Shirley Williams is a, is a, a master or mistress of obfuscatory language. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely adore Shirley Williams, I really do, but her entire career has been issuing clouds of warm words and kind of <laughs> sentiments while she, for instance, smashes up the British educational system. So, so, so lectures on Shirley Williams. No, but at that time she was in power, wasn't she? Yes, yes. yes and there lies the difference. But, but, but it wasn't Shirley who read the small print, it was the GPs. Uh, who read the large print. And the large print said that although this is cloaked in language about you being able to take control, the truth is it means you're going to have to take responsibility uh, for what you prescribe. And that if you prescribe too much and too expensive, uh, then uh, you're going to run out of money. And GPs didn't like that idea. They loved the freedom to prescribe what they like 
and the state, which is to say the taxpayer, picks up the bill. Now, you may take whatever view you like about whether it's the state or the GP <coughs> who should take financial responsibility for the, 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 the treatment that they prescribe, but it was really very simple. GPs real, realized that that was what they were going to have to do and didn't want to do it and have a very effective uh, trade union and, and, um, and stopped it. That's all. Yesterday morning, on my um, the Daily Mail iPhone app, I read probably the, one of the most remarkable headlines I've ever read in a newspaper, which immediately I had to push and read. Hmm. Your shampoo and conditioner are making you fat. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to read this one. This is possibly one of the most important pieces I've ever read in a newspaper. And so eagerly I read this. Apparently there had been some scientific study in America of a particular component of things that are in your bathroom, which in very scientific language could inhibit your, oh, I can't actually remember. Metabolism. Um, meta well, it wasn't the metabolism, it was something else. It sort of did something else. So I read this, it was sort of, it's very, very long article, it was sort of increasing disbelief. And I thought, I wonder if this really is true, or could it be the case that a, a piece of scientific research has been picked up by the Daily Mail and been given a spin which is not borne out by reality. And of course, this is exactly what Ben Goldacre um, has campaigned against, the way that journalism takes very, very complicated ideas and, um, and turns them into a very simple headline. Um, so transfixed was I by this story that I went to my bathroom uh, with this word written down and indeed everything I had in the bathroom had this thing in it. Um, and I thought to myself, am I going to get rid of all this stuff or am I going to be sceptical about the claims of the Daily Mail? Am I going to think that possibly what they have done is exploited a piece of scientific research which was never meant to be exploited for those purposes. So when you said that it is the role of journalists to make this stuff comprehensible, I don't actually trust the journalists who are making it comprehensible. <laughs> So you don't just rely on the Daily Mail, you then go and read the same story. The Daily Mail just puts a question mark at the end of the That's headline. Quite right. Could your shampoo and conditioner make you fat? Yes. But adding to the series of Daily Mail headlines to which the answer is almost certainly no. <laughs> 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 Can illegal immigrants lower your house prices and give you cancer? <laughs> <laughs> that is the, uh, <laughs> That's the express. <laughs>